Shares of Eli Lilly in focus today, climbing after the pharma giant released data on its new weight loss drug to tackle obesity. A large trial showed that Eli Lilly's drug helped obese patients with type 2 diabetes lose over 34 pounds on average, all thanks to its drug ter terzipatide. Let's bring in Evan Siegerman, pharmaceutical equity research analyst at BMO Capital Markets, to discuss. Now, Evan, it seems Wall Street's obsession with weight loss drugs, excuse my pun, keeps growing. Tell us what you think. There are a lot of puns out there, but yes, we think that this is going to be a huge market. Um, our forecast for Manjaro, which is the um, brand name of Trizepatide, yeah. peaked $50 billion by you know the end of the decade, driven by obesity. And that you know doesn't include assets from Novo Nordisk like Ozempic and um, Magovi, which could be another $40, mm -hmm. $50 billion when we look at the whole market. So it is pretty large. It is massive indeed. What's your prospects for FDA approval, Medicare, and insurance coverage? A lot of questions there. So on FDA approval, now Eli Lilly has said that they're going to finish the rolling submission for the obesity indication. Recall, it's already approved in type 2 diabetes, and there is off-label usage of Manjaro in obesity. I expect approval by the end of the year with a launch in obesity probably beginning next year. In terms of coverage, this is a little more nuanced. There is coverage in some patients for Manjaro and type 2 diabetes, but it's going to take some time to get payers on board. You know, there has to be a case that they're building out. We're also looking to some data from Novo Nordisk with their mm -hmm. select trial, looking at outcomes data to see if weight loss driven by these drugs has a positive impact on cardiovascular outcomes. And that could really help payers get on board with covering these drugs. Now, Evan, one of the challenges on it's the competitor side with Wagovi has been supply. Uh, mm -hmm. Is Eli Lilly, from what you're seeing, prepared for the potential issues there? They are. So they've been working on supply even before the launch in type 2 diabetes. They have a plant in North Carolina that's coming on board and more capacity coming out of Indiana. So they're ready to meet the supply demands. Um, they understand that every vial of this drug is going to get used. And I think Novo Nordisk is finally catching up from my understanding. But they're working to make sure that when they launch an obesity, they're ready to go. You mentioned uh, Wagovi and uh, Ozempic from Novo Nordisk. How do mm -hmm. those two compare to Monjaro? So in our view, we think Manjaro is the superior drug, even based on the data we saw yesterday, um, or today, sorry, my mistake, um, in that you got more weight loss um, over about 72 weeks in patients with obesity and type 2 diabetes. Um, this compares to about 9.6% 9 9 um, in the Novo trials. Still good drugs, but we think Manjaro um, is more efficacious and even more tolerable. All right, Evan. Uh, so the prediction is that this is going to be a huge market in general. We're already seeing mm -hmm. that with Novo Nordisk, uh, with a uh, Wagovi. I always struggle with the name yep. of that. Uh, speaking right. of names, what do we think? Because they haven't indicated whether they're going to have a different name for that. Because as you mentioned, right. it's Manjaro is the brand name that it has right. for its current treatment. Are you you're hearing anything about a name that they'll be utilizing for it? So. They there was questions on their earnings call today is whether or not they're going to have a separate brand name for the obesity indication. They weren't very specific. I think they're going to hold that close to the chest until they get approval. Um, you know, I'm comfortable if this were Manjaro under you know for both obesity and type two diabetes. We have the right doses for you know obesity and the hopper. And what it makes it simpler from a supply chain perspective because it's only one drug. Mm -hmm. That was some of the issues that um, Novo was running into. So I'm comfortable either way. Um, it really doesn't impact my estimates because it's still true at the end of the day. You're talking about your estimates, which are enormous. You mentioned it, but you have a $430 price target on Lilly. I assume that I is not factoring in the weight loss component of Monjaro. Well, that is. So we're, we've been very bullish on Monjaro. Um, you know, since the, we got the data last year at the ADA meeting showing that it has a great effort, impact on obese, on, in obese patients. So that does factor in, um, you know, potential, mm -hmm. the launch in obesity. Um, but, you know, that's part of our $52 billion peak sales for the asset. I know it's a crazy number. <laughs> it, it, it's is, crazy. it is. It is quite it's the huge. number. It's, it is. But it's gained it some is. steam since you uh, made that prediction. I mean, today, trading around yeah. 388, so already higher than when you made that uh, bullish target yeah. price. So, and, you know, Barclays isn't too far behind with regard to its rating. I mean, they have a buy rating on the stock as well. Uh, we're looking at 
Lily up about 3% I mean, on the day, so certainly some room there, uh, Evan. Evan yeah. Siegerman, thank you so much for joining us today.